Grand Theft Auto V was released at the very end of the last generation of consoles lifetime, and considering how large of a game it was, Rockstar really had to work hard to cram all of that content into 7 year old hardware. See what Rockstar did here was very smart. Instead of simply porting the game, they went ahead, remastered it, and added brand new modes and loads of extra content, and I'm here to tell you what they're all about. So probably the most apparent thing here is just how beautiful the game looks. Not only did they add more dynamic lighting, new particle effects, and new scenery detail, but most assets, excluding character models, have been redone from the ground up. The guns have more detail, the trees have more life to them, and the draw distance has been improved tremendously. Overall, it just feels next gen. Then it cop out on a simple port. Next we have the big new feature, first person mode. Grand Theft Auto has always had an outside perspective on the character, and that's how the game has always been built. We haven't ever gotten a chance to experience the world of GTA from a protagonist's viewpoint. Now that we can, let me tell you, it feels bizarre. There are an abundant amount of changes to the fashion in which you play the game once you've switched to first person. It seems so familiar, as it should, yet so foreign. First off, the running is more fluid. Instead of having to hold the run button and the left stick forward, you can just hold down the run button once you take off. This makes maneuvering your character a whole lot more manageable, as you can change direction easily without the camera jerking all the way to the side. The next big thing is iron sights. From the first person's perspective, you have three different aiming positions for most guns. There's hip fire, aimed fire, and iron sights. All three have their advantages, and the ability to switch between whichever position you like is a welcome addition. The driving feels just as you would expect it to. Chaotic, cluttered, and a whole lot of fun. You really feel like you're inside the vehicle, especially considering the fully functioned speedometer and a whole arrangement of meters. You also aim your gun more freely from inside the car. While this is a more realistic way to experience causing pandemonium via your automobile through the city, details like bloodstains or cracks in the window can obscure your vision completely, sometimes making third person a more effective way to drive. This innovation in the series doesn't feel just like a gimmick, and I can see myself using it for scenarios where a more precise aim is needed. This FPS mode can be used in single player as well as multiplayer. Something I found out about myself while playing this is that simply mowing down civilians feels a lot more maniacal and demented. Less of a silly, violent game, more of an uncanny, realistic terrorist simulator. Some more miscellaneous features, which I personally have yet to encounter, are the inclusion of more than 20 new species of animals, including dolphins, whales, dogs, and a whole lot more. For those who are worried about their online characters being lost, fear not, as you can transfer them easily and fully intact. So if you've already played the game on Xbox or PS3, is it worth buying again? Well, if you haven't finished it already, I'd say maybe. If you find yourself enjoying the narrative most, there wouldn't be much new for you. But if you really enjoy exploring Los Santos and trying out some new features and activities, go for it. Maybe wait for a used copy or a price drop. If you've beaten the game and haven't found yourself going back to it, the new additions most likely would not entice you enough to complete it again. Keep in mind that this is just my advice, so consider yourself and do some research before spending $60 on a game you already own.